No more heroes. Heroes Paradise. Hey guys, it's Turner4590. And I'm afraid it's been nine years since I Let's Played No More Heroes. <laughs> oh my god, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> so yes, this is uh this is a kind of a special occasion. I know uh, this isn't technically June 19th, but we got to get the ball rolling because it's a momentous occasion because we have a brand new No More Heroes game coming out in 18 days. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty freaking stoked. May not be No More Heroes 3, and judging from most comment sections on those videos, it doesn't seem anyone really wants it, but it's more No More Heroes. I, I'm stoked. I'm stoked as hell. So, uh, to celebrate, let's play the worser version of the first game. This is Heroes Paradise for the PlayStation 3. And uh, despite being a uh, pretty, um, you know, rabid No More Heroes fan, um, I actually haven't played this version to completion, mainly because it sucks. I'm just going to say out right now, if you haven't played No More Heroes, don't bother with the PS3 version. It's worse. Suda wasn't even a part of it. He didn't want to make it. They made it without him. And the Wii version is better in almost every way. This game does have a couple of cool DLC add-ons. But anyway, uh, let's get right to it. Because, again, we ha we are on a strict tire. We got to finish this within uh, <laughs> within uh, pretty soon with uh, the new game coming out. So let's uh, start a new game right away. Ah, there's the classic title screen. Yeah, kind of a lame title screen that they, they added, but hey, hey, at least they have the original title screen back uh, in, in all of its uh, simplistic glory. Uh, anyway, three difficulties, sweet, mild, and inaccessible, <laughs> which is a bitter difficulty, which you need to complete. Uh, I don't. I think you need to complete the game once. I don't think you need to beat mild, but I'm not totally sure on that. Anyway, let's just uh, stick with mild where strong men await me. So first thing you'll notice is uh, the graphics in this game are, I I don't know, man. They basically the best way I can describe it is that they took the original game and then they put a Minecraft shader on the game, so everything looks air quotes better when like looking at the colors and everything is a solid bright color. There's no like actual muted colors in this game. It's really I don't know. It's pretty icky and everything's shiny and uh, I don't know. Well, I'll get into more of the performance issues that this game has after this incredible intro. I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. At least that's what Bishop, the dude at the video store, said. So I'm at the register, and then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because I met this smoking hot chick right <laughs> at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decided to get a job. The gig? Assassinate the Drifter. Fun fact, this is actually uh, new footage that you're seeing right here because in the original intro of the game, they actually showed the uh, first trailer of the game, which was a CG trailer, but now we get the uh, crappy PlayStation 3 models in its place, so that's a little lame, but oh well. Bada bing. Bada bing. Or at least it was supposed to be. Until she showed up. Her name? Sylvia Crystal. An agent with this whatchamacallit association. Congratulations. You are certified as the 11th best hitman. How about getting rid of the 10 killers above you and aim for the top? Sounds like a plan. I've got nothing better to do. I want to be number one. How's that? Short and simple enough for you? Oh, man. It's going to be a long, hard road. I get goosebumps watching this. I love this Congrats. game so much. Could be dangerous. Oh, it's so good. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? This version Join could totally me. suck, though. Let's Again, this is this is kind of a blind playthrough for me. Let's see how this goes. Right now. Just press the start button. Let the bloodshed wow, that doesn't sound nearly as cool as for you holding the Wii Remote out there. Oh, well. <laughs> Feel this. DualShock Rumble going, going! Fuckhead. Never gets old! Yo, 
Help me out here. Where's this death metal dude? <laughs> Bad answer. There's <laughs> a blood splatter too. It's game time. Oh <laughs> yes. <sighs> this is a huge nostalgia trip. <laughs> I know, I know this is basically a game I've already done on this channel before, but goddamn, it's no more heroes. I can do what the hell I want. And right now, we're gonna cut off some heads. Okay, so there is a extremely long-winded tutorial in this game that we're not gonna bother with, because legit, the tutorial takes like 10 minutes just to complete, even going fast. So, this is no more heroes. Uh, basic gameplay mechanics uh, are the... You have a high slash and a low slash, so... Uh, the low slash uh, is uh, more of a broader attack. It'll hit a lot of targets, and the high slash after this little miniature cutscenes. The high the high slash is uh, more of a quicker slash, and you can use that with circle or uh, square and triangle. There's also a punches and kicks, um, punches and kicks. There we go. It's really weird getting used to the controls because obviously this game was used to be played on a Wii remote, and uh, there was high stances and low stances, which you obviously can't do with a DualShock controller, so they just mapped it to buttons. So instead of holding the Wii remote high and then slashing um, with the A button, now you actually have a different button for it, which I guess makes combos more consistent, but it doesn't feel as satisfying in my opinion. Um, it does make it more consistent, I guess. Uh, what is definitely not as satisfying is the killing blow, probably the main combat mechanic you're going to be seeing throughout the game, which is when an enemy's health hits zero, um, it goes into a state where you can deliver the final blow, and it'll do, it'll do a massive blood splatter, and uh, the way this worked is this is where the motion controls came into play on the Wii version, because as soon as, uh, as, soon as the death blow was activated, you swung the Wii remote in whatever direction popped up, and then you'd go for for it and it was really really satisfying and pseudo smart he didn't make it a waggle fest where you're just doing nothing but shaking the Wii remote the whole time pseudo was actually smart and he made it so attack is the a button and it's only for killing enemies only for dealing the final blow is when you actually use the motion controls and it makes it incredibly satisfying to do so and i gotta say using the you have to click the stick in which feels really like it doesn't feel satisfying, and then you have to press a direction. If, it'd be one thing if you just pressed a direction on the control stick, but you have to click the stick first, and it just feels unintuitive and not nearly as fun to do. Uh, and it, you can't do it as rapid. You could kind of go, like, ham with the Wii Remote, and you'd get the killing blow a lot of time. You could do, like, really rapid kills that way, but you can't really do that with uh, the way that the DualShock is laid out. Sadly, and it's probably the same way if you use the classic controller in No More Heroes 2 uh, for the Wii, uh, but I've never actually used it. Because, uh, again, the Wii Remote and Nunchuck was the way the game was meant to be played. This game was originally going to be a 360 game, I believe, until until the Wii was announced, and then Suda was like, well, the Wii just makes way much more sense than, uh, than having it... Uh... <laughs> this guy's freaking out. Than having it on a standard controller. Anyway, so locking onto enemies, uh, this game has kind of a neat mechanic where just by locking onto enemies, you'll automatically block their attacks, uh, as long as you aren't also attacking at the same time. And uh, when you've actually locked onto an enemy, you can do something called a dark step, which is an advanced mechanic. And basically, it, all you have to do is just as soon as you block an attack, if you press the control stick in a direction, uh, either right or left, you will do sort of a slow down time move that'll give you some, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of similar to Witch Time a little bit, but not uh, not nearly as difficult to pull off, I would say. Um, wow, they're just throwing all these mechanics. Again, this is like a 10 minute tutorial that I'm trying to rush through real quick without actually doing the tutorial. Anyway, so this is one of the biggest gameplay changes they made, and I actually have to say it's a pretty good one. Uh, one of the main issues with the special moves in No More Heroes 1, special moves are essentially a slot machine that will, um, once the slot machine takes over uh, and uh, you get three matches, you get a special move that activates immediately. Uh, the problem with the special move is that the special moves themselves are useful, but the special move is cancelled as soon as every enemy in the room is dead. Because this is sort of like a corridor action game where you kill all the enemies, the door opens. You kill all the enemies, the next door opens. You got it. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, you're the number one ranked assassin in the world. <laughs> but, um... 
the uh, it kind of ruined most of the special moves because nine times out of ten you were gonna get a special move right as the last guy is killed and it's just cancelled immediately and it's not satisfying for anyone so in this game they actually made it so that as soon as you get a special move it's actually stalked uh, at the bottom right corner and you can activate the special move at any time I'm not sure if this means you can use it for bosses I'm actually not entirely sure but now you can use it at the start of a room and you could really screw all the enemies up knowing full well that your power-up isn't gonna run out prematurely because every enemy is dead um, another thing you've been seeing over and over again is the clash which is uh, about it's pretty self-explanatory as soon as soon as you uh, if you and an enemy connect swords at the same time specific attacks then uh, you'll actually enter a clash where you need to rotate the control stick and uh, depending on if if the enemy wins the clash then they get a hit on you but if you win the clash you get an instant killing blow which is really really useful because yeah that's an instant kill on ev on most enemies I'm pretty sure and then for uh, for bosses, obviously you get uh, a pretty pretty big chunk of health taken out, just no problem. Uh, bo bosses we'll get into. Bosses are the uh, bread and butter of No More Heroes. That's absolutely for sure. Another thing that's uh, bread and butter about No More Heroes is that the soundtrack, well, in No More Heroes One, admittedly, is a little repetitive. Um, it's a lot of the same song over and over again. So <laughs> maybe Sakurai directed this game because you just hear the same thing remixed over and over and again, over and over again. But there's a guy inside this wall. That's not good. Uh, let's try checking in the pool room and maybe kill him. Yep, okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, here's the clash I was talking about, and we got him immediately. There we go. Um, the music in this game is fantastic. The uh, Masafumi Takata did the soundtrack for No More Heroes 1. Not for No More Heroes 2, unfortunately, but uh, No More Heroes 2 is sort of a collaboration between a bunch of different artists. And honestly, No More Heroes 2, while I prefer No More Heroes 1 for a variety of reasons that uh, if you watched my LP of it like seven years ago, then maybe you remember some of them. Charles Bobert Jr., but um, the soundtrack of No More Heroes 2 is, is quite fantastic. Anyway, No More Heroes 1... Is, uh, is no slouch either. You do get a lot of remixes of the same theme over and over again, but they're good remixes, and Masafumi Takana has done some fantastic work. Uh, Danganronpa uh, trilogy, to name uh, to name one, uh, some of his finest work. But No More Heroes' his theme always holds a special place in my heart, obviously, because I'm a super fan. So j just like that, like it, you kind of have to fiddle with the, the analog stick, and it just feels awkward to actually do killing blows. It's a little little annoying. Anyway, so this is an elite enemy, and uh, these only come up uh, every now and then. So this is a great enemy to use Dark Step on, as you can see, because yeah, using Dark Step, you can really, really cut down health. Dark Step isn't mandatory. On harder difficulties, it may as well be, though, because you need to do a lot of damage, because enemies do a lot of damage to you. So the quicker you kill them, the better. Okay, this room is actually huge, so let's actually activate, uh, <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, one of, uh, one of Travis's special moves, and unfortunately you don't get very much use of it before the tiger, uh, goes all the way down, that's your little, uh, at the top right of the screen is where your little meter for, uh, for the special moves is. Unfortunately, I, I, I can't remember uh, what the name of that special move is. Unfortunately, I have the audio pretty low right now, so you can't hear the uh, very loud sound effects of everyone's heads being cut off. Speaking of heads being cut off, uh, one, one thing I want to point out is that, again, I don't know, this version, one cool thing about the blood in No More Heroes 1 uh, and... Ooh, Grasshopper, nice. Uh, one cool thing about the blood in No More Heroes 1 is that there is no... There was no anti-aliasing on the blood at all, so it looked really pixelated, which normally would look bad. But I don't know, it, it actually, I feel like it helped with the blood. It made it stand out more and look more stylistic. But now the blood in, in the PS3 version is just this massive blur of, like, it almost looks like a, a, like a 240p JPEG of blood that just has, is coming out of the guy's head. Um, it's, it's still, it doesn't look awful, I just think, again, the, with the Wii version, they really did the best with what they had at the time, and, uh, with the PS3 version, I don't know, it just, it really feels like they just put on a bunch of shaders that didn't really mesh that well. It doesn't look awful, but it's, it's not, uh, not an improvement, in my opinion. Speaking of, that is, that is a, 
subjective thing, obviously. If you prefer the graphics of this version, then that's fine. One thing that can't be stated, that's an awesome poster that I never even realized was over there. That is that is really cool. Point the camera up, Travis. That's awesome. Um, one thing that can't be uh, can be stated is objective is that the performance of this game, no, no one here's one didn't have the best performance in the world. I'll be the first to admit that it, it could range anywhere from sixty when you're just in an empty room to ten when there's way too much going on on screen. So it's definitely not a consistent game frame rate wise, but it still was able to reach sixty in in some places and some cutscenes. This game, however, is locked at thirty and even just like the Wii version, it barely manages to keep that so it actually this game runs worse than the Wii, Wii version based solely on the fact that its frame rate isn't even uh isn't even isn't even is it it's capped lower than the Wii version that being said this is uh this is an LP made with 10 years <laughs> future technology so if you go back and watch the original playthrough it's th this playthrough is going to look a hell of a lot better just because you know HD capture cards weren't really a uh commercial thing back there, at least not affordable, especially to uh, someone <laughs> with no money. And that is it. We actually made it to the end of Death Metal's mansion already. Spoiler alert, we are going up against rank 10, number Death Metal, uh, right after a call from our femme fatale, Sylvia Crystal. <laughs> Are you up to this? Need a bathroom break? Whatever you need to do, do it now. Your opponent, some call him the Holy Sword. He is good, but I know you can take him. You are the man. <laughs> I am the tiger. He only looks soft because his mother was an ugly bitch. Jeez. Take it to the red zone. Assassin's way at full throttle. Unleash your power. Show no mercy. Bring me death metal dead. We just met, lady. <laughs> I believe in you and your sport. Now, off to the garden of madness. Another cool thing that they took away from uh, the Wii, Wii version is that uh, Sylvia's calls actually came through the Wii Remote speaker. The Wii Remote speaker is god-awful, but just the novelty of getting a phone call and holding up your Wii Remote to your ear was really cool. I don't know. Uh, I remember in the first playthrough, I didn't... I, did, I had the Wii Remote speaker on. If you turned off the Wii Remote speaker, it would come through the TV. But if you had the Wii Remote speaker on, I remember I held it up to, like, my microphone, and, like, you couldn't hear shit. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be kind of be reliving moments of my past glory or past disgrace. I don't know what you want to call it, because um, again, this is a huge nostalgia trip for me. This is, uh, this is, this is one of my first games I ever did on the channel. This was one of the reasons I wanted to LP. It was just because I, I was so, I loved No More Heroes so much, and I still do. Number two, <laughs> number two on my list, and number two. In real life, because this is uh, one of the more infamous things about this game. Uh, Tavis, Travis just straight up takes a dump whenever he saves this game. That's, uh, that's a pretty memorable way to do it, not going to lie. You're going to see a lot of different kinds of stalls all throughout this game. Uh, some, some better off than others. Anyway, so thankfully you can have up to 12 save files in this game, which I believe the Wii version could only have uh, 5, I believe. So, hey, that's an improvement. That's over double the save slot, so I'll take it. Nothing like a good backup save to make Turn Turn happy. <laughs> Oh geez. Okay, backup saves aren't gonna be a good thing if it actually takes this long to save the game. It's still going. It's still going. Okay, save okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, game. Yikes, that's bad. I'm gonna probably just cut that down in editing uh, from now on, because <laughs> that's actually insane. Okay, let's stop beating around the bush. Let's get to our first ranked assassin, rank 10, death metal.
No splash card for him, so I'm just gonna have to spoil the name right now. Quite beautiful, wouldn't you say? Paid for with the lives of many. When you have the strength to take life for yourself, that is true wealth. I am free of desire. So long as I have this scenery to look upon, I need nothing more. Please. Honestly, not a bad view. You're the one leaving in a body bag. Cutting right I to the chase. Say this once more. Leave here now. Huh. Mealy? You obviously don't know me. You don't get it, do you? Hey, you know what paradise is, right? Paradise. This is paradise, the place where dreams are fulfilled. Well, you've had your dream, old man. Time to wake up. This is no paradise. All right, then what is it? A place to die. Huh. I'm glad you and I are on the same page here. So naive. You have no idea, do you? What a pity. You make an old man cry. <laughs> oh, he looks really sinister right there. Little shits like you come around from time to time. The cinematography in this game, by the way, which uh, <laughs> it's probably not a word you hear thrown around a lot <laughs> when talking about nor arrows, but I don't know. It's it's really well done. I really like it. Because these guys are definitely the highlight of the game for sure. You can take that to your grave. Oh god, he's going like this. Okay, rank 10, Death Metal, the very first boss of No More Heroes 1. So this is where you get to your uh, your first uh, taste of what the game has to offer, which is a plethora of ranked assassins, all with wacky personalities, wacky weapons, and wacky attack patterns. Uh, this guy is, as far as first bosses go, is actually a little hard to deal with, mainly just because of uh, one of the, the, his attacks he'll be doing later in the fight. Uh, first thing you're going to want to be doing is just basically whenever you stun a boss, whenever you get their chickens above their head, you need to go for a throw, uh, which is actually a mechanic I haven't even really talked about. Yeah, when there's chickens above uh, enemies' heads, you can actually do a suplex, which isn't, uh, isn't normally a killing blow, but it can do a ton of damage, and it's extremely effective on boss fights. Uh, boss fights are very prone to being suplexed, so <laughs> you should do that all the time. Another thing that you uh, are probably hearing right now in the background is probably uh, probably hor horribly audio balanced, uh, <laughs> for as, if my testing is anything to go by, um, is Travis having a little bit of a monologue, a bit of a cr internal crisis, uh, maybe. Um, this is actually something that never happens again. You'd think that when I first played the game, I thought that, oh, maybe he's going to be talking throughout every boss but it's actually just this one um but his, his actual speech is is quite interesting and again robin Atkin downs is a fantastic uh performances travis touchdown everyone in this game does a really good job and him especially this is uh this is my favorite role of his although <laughs> kazuhiro miller from metal gear is also pretty good boss Anyway, so this is where the fight gets a little bit annoying because this is where uh, Death Met. Okay, see, that's me. Travis wiggling like a madman right there is me trying to activate Dark Step and failing miserably. So, uh, oh shit, we're actually out of juice. So, uh, this is uh, another primary mechanic that I haven't even talked about or that I'm going to actually ignore because I'm just going to pick this up. That is charging your beam katana, and you can pick up battery packs on the ground or you can uh, waggle your Wii Remote if you get my drift. Um,. Unfortunately, uh, actually charging your beam katana in this game has you waggling the dual shock instead, and it's really, really bad. It barely ever works, and uh, you're going to be charging for a, at least twice the time it would take to do with a weird mode, because, again, it wasn't really calibrated to actually do that. So and anyway, Death Metal's jumping all over the place because of his clones. It's a little bit annoying. Again, a little, a little bit of a camera screw for the first boss. The camera isn't very good in the first No More Heroes or the second, really. But uh, we're doing pretty good. We're doing a lot better than I did in my test rounds, that's for sure. Just to make sure the game actually functioned, because I haven't really played the game myself. <laughs> and there you go.
Whoa. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, jeez, the jiggling, too. You see what I mean? Look at that blood. Look at how bad it looks. Ugh, I don't know. It's it's gross looking. But not in the, like, yeah, gross looking. It's just looking, ugh. That's not pleasant. No villain monologues for you. Or maybe Travis is the villain. He already got his monologue during the boss fight. Oh. Okay. There you go. 24 minutes, so yeah, we're, again, we're, we're gonna be breezing through this game. I know the original LP was 51 parts, which is, mwah, that's perfect, suit 51 and all that, but uh, we're gonna be significantly less than this playthrough, let's just say that. Okay, so uh, we can marvel at our, uh, <laughs> at our handiwork right there. I wonder, can you point the camera up? Are his hands and sword still embedded in the ceiling, I wonder? Huh. Uh, come on, Travis. They are! That's actually a really cool detail. You probably wouldn't even be able to make that out in the Wii version, let's be honest. There we go. Uh, Travis would not punch that container for some reason, just wouldn't punch. Anyway, so one interesting thing about this game is that it kind of has a Zelda thing where once you beat the boss, you get a heart container container but uh in this game in zelda you could choose to not pick it up for a challenge run but no heroes it's like nope you're picking it up whether you want to or not uh, before you can actually progress so that's a little interesting have to be in tip-top shape if we're gonna make our way to the yes, top of the ranks Travis, i didn't think you had it in you it was rather exciting congratulations you are now ranked 10th 10th huh what? Was that easy? Get anything? Hmm. How about some cash? That should help you pay the bills. I'm not feeling the sense of accomplishment. Jeez. I here. So I just gotta do this a few more times, right? If you so choose, yes. And you will keep your promise? There is nothing the association cannot do. And if I refuse? As the tenth ranked assassin. You are now a target for those who want to replace you. Anytime, anywhere. Number 11 could be right around the corner. Yeah, really. Ready to put a knife in your eye. Or a so flute. what you're telling me is that I got to continue It'll make sense. Fighting. In There's the next no game. way out. <laughs> you set me up, bitch. What did you think you were getting into? This is a killing organization. There's only one road out of here. No turning back. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Come on, just once. <laughs> Travis has his priorities straight. My god, this I think this is even running at 30 frames. This definitely ran at 60 in the in the original. Anyway, <laughs> so this is a little bit of a jaunty tune you get whenever you <laughs> successfully murder another human being. And uh, just like that, we have uh, this seeming, seemingly nobody otaku assassin, Travis Touchdown, has just made its way to the top 10 killers of the world. Goddamn. Or a speed demon. Or a speed buster. That name's already taken, though.